Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light beyond darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. 
On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? That he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Karen's a reading. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's an old saying that says that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Jesus is following that advice as he makes his way to, to, to Jerusalem from his hometown of Capernaum on the north coast of the Sea of Galilee. This straight line takes him directly through the area of Samaria primary land of people known as Samaritans. Now, most of the Jews of Jesus, they would avoid this area at all cost because of the hostile relations that existed between Jews and Samaritans. Hostility that, that began following the elimination of the northern kingdom of Israel in 721 BC and continued unabated during Jesus' day. Yet, Jesus chose not to be deterred by those who, who warned him not to travel through Samaria, even though it was the most direct route, and travel much further to, to the east along the, the Jordan River to avoid any contact at all with the hated Samaritans. But that was not part of Jesus' nature. He over and over again in his time in the world refused to let a physical as well as a human-made boundary stop him from doing what he knew was the right thing to do. Just because people had labels placed upon them did not deter Jesus from his appointed task. He had a mission to fulfill, and nothing was going to stand in his way, least of all human-constructed barriers. Just because past practice dictated that Jesus should not travel through hostile territory or, or, or provide care to those Jewish religious leaders said were enemies or unclean by, by human dictated taboos and rules, his actions said otherwise. When those around him told Jesus, stay away from the Samaritans, walk on the other side of the street to avoid the unclean, he didn't either. A human made rule or boundary or taboo that made people second class citizens, Jesus basically thumbed his nose at those rules. And he met lepers on their own turf and did not regard them as outcast. He disregarded ritual practice, human made taboos, and instead opted to practice love and grace care, and healing for those dismissed by societal norms. Compassion for those outcasted by society, be it by illness or ethnic background or situation in life or even how you worship God would take precedence over centuries, centuries of human-created ritualistic practice should be a lesson we take from Jesus' encounter with the ten lepers, those he met as he traveled from Jerusalem to, to Jerusalem through the land of Samaria, especially in a world like ours that is so divided. Like Jesus, we, we cannot and dare not permit centuries and decades of human-made rituals to deter us from doing what is right. 
we must not allow past prejudices to keep us from practicing lives of compassion and care. I know it's hard to speculate on what Jesus would do or how Jesus would feel in any circumstance, but I believe in my heart of hearts that Jesus would be very disappointed in us, who fall, those of us who follow in his stead, if we allow ourselves to continue to allow years and years of prejudice and bigotry against our fellow human beings, whether that bigotry is based on religious views or color of skin or ethnic origin or political ideology, to deter us from practicing the virtues of compassion and kindness and love, the virtues that Jesus shared in his life, and in his work, in his mission, and his ministry. He exhibited those virtues in his encounters with those whose society placed on the margins, and those who were shunned and ostracized simply because they contracted a disease that was not of their own making, or practiced the faith that was viewed as being outside the mainstream. It is those traits that Jesus expects his followers, those who call themselves Christians, to model in their daily lives. As Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem to fulfill God's mission of salvation, we are called in this day and age, centuries removed, from the time of Jesus, to also embody those virtues of compassion, kindness, love, acceptance, and adhere to Jesus' words as we live in this world when he tells us, as he told the young lawyer at the end of the parable of the Good Samaritan, go and do likewise. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel sent from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to so highly favored for God is with you. You shall be a child and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God create bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of us. Now go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.